Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about CCA, recapture, and terminal losses with examples. If you like what you see, please give this video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. So if you didn't know already, there's two things in this world that you can't avoid, death and taxes. So now let's learn a little bit about taxes. So the overview for today is that we're going to go through the definitions of what CCA is, recapture, and terminal losses. Next, we're going to go into what are CCA requirements. Then I'm going to show you a CCA calculation template that you can apply to any case that you are doing. We're going to talk about additional CCA rules, then what happens when you dispose of an asset, and then most common CCA classes to be used, and then lastly, what exam references you are provided. Don't worry if you think you're going to get confused about this, as when we get to the disposition of assets, I'm going to go through an example of how CCA, recapture, and terminal losses work. So now let's define what is CCA, UCC, and recapture. CCA stands for capital cost allowance, which is essentially the tax term for depreciation. UCC stands for undepreciated capital cost, which is the tax term for undepreciated assets, or in other words, what's still left over that you can depreciate. Recapture might be a new term for some people, and it's essentially the amount you need to include in your income and the remaining asset class balance is negative. So here are some key facts that you need to remember about CCA. First off, CCA is discretionary, which means you don't actually need to take CCA if you don't want to. The next is that the CCA percentage that is quoted in the tax act is a maximum amount. You can claim anything between zero and that amount stated in the tax act. At times when you already have a loss in the business, you might elect not to take CCA as it can be carried forward and used the next year. Lastly, if you already have a rental loss without taking CCA, you can't take additional CCA to increase your loss. So now let's talk about the CCA template that I've built for you to use. Once you understand how to use the template, you can tailor it to any case that you're doing. So now let's go through the CCA template. In another example, I'm going to fill it in with numbers, so don't worry if you're not sure what's going on. So you'll start with the undepreciated cost of capital. That would be your opening balance. If you haven't bought anything in the previous years, that opening balance will be zero. Then you'll add in all the assets that you bought throughout the year that are subjected to the half year rule. And we'll talk about which assets are subjected to the half year rule afterwards. And then you'll less any disposals in a class subjected to half year rules. So then as a result, you would take the net amount and that becomes your balance before CCA. So you would add up your UCC opening balance plus all the net additions or disposals within the year that are subjected to the half year rule. Now you add up all the additions and disposals within the year that are not subjected to the half year rule. And then finally, you'll minus out 50% of those assets that are subjected to the half year rule. Then you would get your final UCC balance before CCA. And this is the number that you will multiply by the CCA rate. Remember that the CCA rate stated in the tax act is a maximum amount. So theoretically, you can put in 0% as the CCA. However, most of the time people will just take the maximum amount that is stated within the tax act. To determine the closing balance of the UCC for this year, which is also the opening balance of UCC for the next year, you would simply take the opening balance of UCC this year minus by the CCA claimed for this year. So now let's talk about some additional CCA rules. The first one we want to talk about is the half year rule. The reason for having the half year rule is because the CRA doesn't know when you actually bought your items and some people might have bought them in the beginning of the year and some people might have bought them at the end of the year. So to average everything out, they just assume everyone claims half a year of CCA. So it averages out like you bought it in the middle of the year. And this half year rule applies to your net purchases, which means it's your additions less your dispositions. Some classes are not subjected to the half year rule, which are some assets within class 12, class 14, and class 52. If you look into the tax act and you go into the section where it talks about the classes of assets, they actually clearly state which asset classes are subjected to the half year rule and which are not. In the description below, I tried making a summary of the most commonly used classes and I also put in which ones are included in the half year rule and which ones are not, so make sure you check it out. The last thing I want to talk about is that CCA needs to be prorated for a shortened tax year. So for example, if you have a shortened tax year in the year that you created your business or closed your business, then you have to prorate the CCA based on how many days of the year the company was operating. 
So now let's go through the example using that CCA template. So in this example, we pretend that our UCC opening balance was 20,000 and in the year you bought something for $5,000 and then you sold something for $1,000. And both of them were subjected to the half year rule. And this asset class is class 50, which has a rate of 55%. So in our example, you start off with the UCC balance of $20,000, then you add in the 5,000 minus the 1,000, then you get a net additions subjected to half year rule of $4,000. So then your balance before CCA is $24,000. You don't have any additions or dispositions of assets that are not subjected to the half year rule. Then you minus out 50% of the net additions subjected to the half year rule, which is applying 50% to the net additions subjected to the half year rule, which is $4,000. Then you'll get a final balance before CCA, which is $22,000, and you'll multiply that by your CCA maximum rate of 55%, which results in a CCA claim of $12,100. Your closing UCC balance or the opening balance of the next year would be $7,900. When talking about dispositions, what you deduct from CCA is the lesser of the original cost of the asset that you purchased or the proceeds of disposition. So when you have disposed of all of your assets in one asset class, you would normally be left with either a positive or negative balance. If you have a negative balance, we will call the remaining amount a recapture, which would be added to your active business income. If you have a positive amount, you would get a terminal loss, which reduces your active business income. And then overall, these increases and decreases in active business income will also respectively increase or decrease your taxes payable. So now let's first look at an example of CCA recapture, and then we'll do another example of terminal loss. So in this case, we pretend that the opening balance of UCC is $5,000, and there was no additions in the year, and we disposed of the last asset in this asset class and we determine what is the disposition amount that we want to deduct from CCA based on the lesser of the original cost and the proceeds. In this case, original cost was $30,000, proceeds was $15,000, and the lesser of the two is $15,000. Therefore, we will deduct $15,000 from $5,000. And as a result, the remaining UCC balance is negative $10,000 this $10,000 would be added to your active business income as if you made an extra $10,000 in income. So here's a question for you. What about the capital gains and losses? How does the tax work on that? So since obviously CRA loves money, there's obviously going to be taxes on capital gains like normal. However, there's no such thing as a capital loss. Therefore, you can't have capital losses on depreciable assets. So now let's talk about terminal losses. And to have a terminal loss, all of the following need to be met. The first criteria is that an asset in a CCA class is disposed of. There is no other asset remaining in the CCA class after the asset is disposed. And then after the disposal, the UCC balance is greater than zero. So now let's look at the example for terminal loss. The opening balance in UCC is 15,000, you had no additions in the year, and you disposed of something that was originally cost 13,000, and then you got proceeds of 8,000. So again, you take the lesser of the two, which is $8,000, and you would subtract $8,000 from the opening UCC balance. And as a result, you would get an ending UCC balance of $7,000. Since the UCC balance at the end of the year is positive and you have no other assets in this asset class, this balance gets to be deducted from your income. So here I've listed the most commonly used CCA rates and the type of assets it would be used on and some rules that apply to it. Something to point out here is that class 8 is essentially the catch-all, so if it doesn't fit in any other class, it fits in that one. On this slide, you'll see additional most common CCA rates used. I've actually created a more detailed document to highlight all the different types of assets and what their CCA rates are and a little description of what they are. If you want to check it out, I put a link in the description below. And remember, on your exam, you don't actually get the descriptions of what the assets are. All you get is the class and the rate. So that's something you need to memorize yourself. Here's just an example of what you get on the actual exam. Like I said before, you just get the class number and the rate. And then you also get the present value of the tax shield for amortizable assets as well. Thanks again for watching. If you like what you saw, please remember to subscribe. Also, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments below. Hopefully this video has helped you better understand CCA, recapture, and terminal losses.